Executive Finance Special Session. I'll call it to order. And Harley, would you give our invitation, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Power hat. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today to meet and discuss the business of the Cherokee Nation. Please put your hand upon us to make sure that we keep the Cherokee people in mind. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Roll call, please. Jack Baker. Here. Caracom Watt. Ani. Bill Angler. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Harley Buzzer. Here. Julia Coates. Brad Cobb. Here. Joe Crittenden. Here. Jody Fishinghawk. Here. Matt and Craven. Mel Fulbright. Here. Don Garvin. Here. Chuck Hoskin, Jr. Connor Gore Jordan. Present. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Soap. David Thornton. Okay, we have a quorum. Okay, we're going to continue with our community services. Mr. Chair? Yes. I kind uh, of had a feeling yesterday that uh, see Don Greenfeather in the audience here. I'd like to give him a few minutes to come up and explain the housing issue that we were a little bit debated yesterday. Maybe five minutes if we could. Okay. It's like you're up, Don. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good, Good morning. Council. Old morning. Council, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I understand from the meeting yesterday that there's maybe some questions concerning the self-help housing program. And if I can help in any way, I'd like to address maybe some of those questions. Is that correct? Yes. Do you all have any questions? Mm -hmm. you all? Yes. The questions that I heard yesterday from Ms. Bobby were how much in material costs to the housing, how much in additional other costs that you need to hire experts, journeymen required for licenses, um, compared to like a standard home that the house, housing authority would. If the housing authority bill, yeah. I, I can't answer for housing authority, but material wise, we're uh, just on the structure itself, we're putting about 40 between 47,000 and 50,000 uh, in the home. Yes, Ms. Fishingall. I talked to Marvin Jones yesterday, we didn't know the big over at Adam and about this. Uh, we was going over yesterday, we got told these houses all together, fall cost. You know, incurred on are roughly $85,000. Well, I, the quote I just gave you was for the material yes, on the house. Yes, that's what I understand. And we, uh, the self help program is where uh, we provide the material, we provide a certain amount of technical assistance. We do have a licensed electrician and licensed plumber on board. We do that work that's up to code according to the county or the towns that we're working in. And uh, then we have made the allowance for the TA assistance, and that depends on the client. We have some clients that can go out there, they have the expertise, that uh, there's very little technical assistance is provided, and then there's others that we have to spend quite a bit of time with. So that varies okay, know, okay. on the house. And there again, you have to take in your equipment, you have to take in your man hours, and so forth. So. Okay, so uh, when I talked to him, I said, I want to I wrap this with this $85,000. We figured with the pad, with the pad included in this price, he said, Jody, fifty-five to sixty thousand dollars is materials. I said, okay. He said we might go as low as fifty-five thousand dollars to sixty thousand is materials. The pad, concrete, everything. So my question was, if it's fifty-five, there's twenty-five left over. And I got explained yesterday. I think in this group that that part laying over there was the cost incurred of the house and the industry, you know, everything else piles on it. I, my family's <coughs> into construction, houses, I think things houses. I'm looking at this 55 for a house, and then I'm looking at half that much again to administer this program. How do you all get it down to be more efficient? In, you know, because I, I look at these people, it cost me $50,000 material long to build this house, but it's going to cost me half that much again through this program. How do you all get your numbers down to be more efficient? I run, I run businesses all my life. What goes to the direct cost is X amount of money. But if, you know, $100,000 is going to whatever, tires for that month of a business, I'm not making no money if it don't take another $50,000 to do that, where the materials ain't going in. So how do you all get that number down is what I'm asking. I see a little... In, <coughs> in the housing plan, we've done a projection. 
on those homes. And uh, we, we, made, we made sure that that 85000 covered everything. The material, the development costs, sometimes development costs amount to more than on... Uh, I thought sick homes had to have their land to begin with. Huh? I thought sick homes had their land to begin with. Yeah, they do. Okay. Okay. But on land. running utilities, sometimes that varies. You run, uh, you know, the... Uh, the electric, sometimes it's a quarter of a mile, sometimes it's a half a mile. And so we, we took the scenario of what it would probably cost, uh, you know, on, on top. And hopefully we can, you know, watch, watch the spending of our money on those houses. You know, uh, the amount that we have left over, we'll just turn around and build, build more houses with it. But we want to make sure it's better It's better to overestimate than it is to underestimate. But the people only pay back for the cost of actual materials, right? Third, no, they only pay for the cost of material. They pay back $35,000. So uh, it would benefit us to get these costs down. Uh, it would be benefit us to get these costs down, that extra was way there. And hopefully that's what we're doing. Do you have a graph of how we lowered it since we started these programs? I can or what were in place to make it lower to become more efficient? Uh, I can Excuse me. Okay. okay. May I make a comment? Unless, unless you're seriously considering altering the amount in the budget for the housing or whatever, I think these questions okay. are better served in the regular mm -hmm. committee. Okay. And I think we should limit our question is not to how a program is being performed unless you really are going to change the amount in the budget and what questions about that. Because otherwise, we're never going to finish with our hearings. I'd like, I'd like to make one more comment. Okay. The self-help housing project is one of the housing uh, uh, components, not the only housing component with the Triber Housing Authority. And the self-help housing doesn't fit every, uh, for, uh, cut, you know, every client every person. This is for people that have the capability, first of all, to make the monthly payments and the capability of constructing a major of their home. So the Housing Authority has mortgage assistance program. They have 184. I heard David, I think they're implementing that program. Stan Hummingbird has the HIP home. We have the re -home, rehab pro uh, component that uh, they construct new homes. And so we're one of the housing programs, not the only housing program. Okay, Mr. Thorne. Uh, I just had one comment. These homes vary in prices. And just for what uh, Don said, like I know of one home that already had the septic tank, the septic system there, it uh, had the electric there, everything was there. So they didn't have to pay for that. And, it was, and that home cost them a whole lot less than what it would have been if it had been out there in the woods somewhere and they had put everything in, you know, electric system and all that. But each one of them vary in prices, really what it cost me to put it in. Mr. Snell. Bob, do you have the self-help housing out of your department to come out of housing? No, it comes out of our department, out of our community, yes. community services. Yeah, Mr. Jordan. Um, did I understand that you all are thinking about hiring carpenters to do the drying? Uh, yes. uh, how many do you think you're going to hire? We're going to put up a we're on the crew to construct the walls and put the roof panels on. I think we're going to hire five. Okay. Uh, we're going to put them on as full time employees. Temporary full time to start with. That'll probably. Mm -hmm. Increase on average our packages, our cost packages, not to the participant but to us overall because we'll have these additional people that we'll have to it'll, spread their money out over our it'll, it'll have a certain amount of increase, but we can do it quicker instead of putting so many PA hours in with them. Mm -hmm. We can go out there and with the train crew, we can put the walls and the roof on if the weather permitting in three days. We can okay. get the walls up and get the roof off. How, uh, this uh, sample home that we have over here, and I haven't been over to look at it, but I'm going to go over and look at it. Uh, about how long has it taken us to put those together here on site so that we can then take them apart and take them out to, or take the unit pieces out? How long have we been working on that house? Uh -huh. is, what, is what you're saying. I think we've been working, putting the walls and everything up probably for three weeks. Okay. 
total? Uh, we've got four million from 05, 06, and 07 in the home ownership building package uh, line items. We have something in the neighborhood of $4.3 million. And if I understood Ms. Foreman correctly yesterday, you have 10 participants that are on the list to get housing. There's a total of 18. 18? Okay. Yeah, that's just one. Okay. For some reason, she gave us the number 10 yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we had, I don't think we've updated her the last week or so, but we get calls every day from sending out applications. Now, of that $4.3 million, are you just taking the $35,000 per person now, or are you taking the $85,000 plus whatever the additional cost to hire these carpenters will be and setting that aside for that home unit? I'm trying to see how much of this money you'd have left after you service those 18 potential participants. Okay. First, first of all, all of that money will be spent on the single package houses. And uh, that four million something will go, you know, to more than the 18. And uh, what we'll do, as, as we give them the house package, and yeah, the wages on the t technical assistance of plumbing and so forth will come out. Of so we're still not, working. Not in addition to the eighty-five thousand. It'll be under that. Okay. So we're still working on the 0500. Yes, ma'am. We haven't touched 06, 07. We're finishing up on the 06. Yes, we are. We're not going to get a carryover on the 06 money. Okay, so you're going to close out your 05 money. Close out the 06 money. Well, you still got 816000 in your 05 money. Uh, or at least that's what this uh, card here shows. Okay. It's on page 112 of Doug's yeah. uh, paperwork. Okay. Uh, what? The 816? Uh huh. Yes, that's 05. So you, you've got your 05 money. Okay, Jack can come up here if you will. I'll get a vote for the first two seconds. Okay. Restate your question. What, I, what I'm saying is you got 800000 in your 05 money. You've got your 06 money, which uh, you've got $1.78 million plus. Then in your 07 uh, money, you've got $1.6 million plus. And then, of course, uh, we're always hopeful that our 08 money will be available at some point. So now we're four years out on using our money. I guess what I'm asking is, is there a, a reasonable timetable that we can expect this money to be used on self-help projects? Or do we need to go back to our, our uh, housing plan or reallocate some of this money so that we can get houses faster into the system and serve our people quicker? The whole idea of bringing the money over here to community development was because you all, not you all, but the organization thought the money could get out to the people quicker in the form of adequate, safe, sanitary housing. Right. We're not getting it out any quicker than the people we took it away from. I would like to see a timetable or let's consider as a I body. I think you're still getting away from it. No, no, because my next question is, okay. as a body, should we not be utilizing this money in a line item where the housing will get to the people quicker? We're still four years out on money. At what point will we catch up and be using current year housing money? Hopefully in the very, very near future. We, we uh, are adding additional staff to expand the program. And I think, Connie, if you go back and check the figures, that Housing Authority cost them a whole lot more. They had all kinds of sub-offices. They had uh, crews. And I think if you, the money that they received versus what we have in, in these budgets, 
with five employees at this time, seven employees at this time, with the hiring of additional staff. Half the thought we had a lot more employees. Well, than we had. okay, seven employees is adding thirty or forty thousand dollars technical assistance to each house. If my calculations are right, if we look at what you have told us the house materials cost Correct. versus the actual expense of each housing unit, we're for seven employees at thirty thousand minimum on each additional house. Plus when we hire these carpenters, that's going to go up because they'll be considered technical assistants too, I would assume. So it looks like we're getting back into the same problem. The reason it has taken a while is because we just got this program about a year or a year and a half ago and we've been developing policies and procedures and working with commerce and getting interdepartmental agreements in place and it looks like we're reinventing the wheel again. And I'm not getting on to you all. I'm just trying to figure out how as a body we get this money out quicker for housing to our people. That's all I'm doing for this body. But again, let me reiterate here, Tanya, is that when we have a crew and we've evaluated, we meet on a regular basis and we evaluate the program, the projects that we're doing, and we're going to start constructing the walls and the roof, help that participant set up. Instead of having all that TA with people going out there and helping them and waiting, that same amount of money will be spent on this crew. So as far as raising the price beyond the 85 or whatever, it's not going to do it. And I don't want you all to think that I'm jumping on you or anything of that nature. No problem. I just think these questions have to be placed on the table for this body to make a complete decision as to whether you leave this money in the same unit items or not, or whether you consider asking them to look at an alternative approach to using the money and catching up quicker. You know, there are units to be bought out there that are already finished that we can put people in. That is always another option for us to consider. Okay, but I'm not sure that's to be considered at this time. No, I don't agree. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut you off, Mr. Soap and Mr. Crittenden. And then unless there's a motion. I just had a question for Doug and Callie. Is that possible? Can we reallocate these funding or are these funding specifically reserved for housing materials and labor and all that stuff? Indian housing plan. Landing housing. That's where you would need to make the first change. And that would authorize the allocation of the determination budget. Do you agree with that? I think community services is where the Indian housing plan is reviewed. So maybe there needs to be a review of the Indian housing plans in that committee, both to understand where we are in the plan. I'm just talking about the funding. Yeah, the funding is allocated per the plan. So it is optional that we can allocate it to some other department? Well, we can amend the Indian housing plan. We have to go through the amendment process to amend the housing plan. Which? We need to follow our plan. And if we're going to change our plan, then we can move the dollar to line up with the new plan. Okay. But in order to change the plan, that has to be done in a separate committee. Am I correct on that? Okay. Mr. Crittenden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had a comment. Don, it's good to see you again. I just think that we're poised right now, and things have been laid in place the last year or so to kick this housing package program off. And there's been talk, I think, about some other warehouses to maybe put this stuff together. He says he's getting calls every day for people wanting to get signed up on the program. I think the thing's just going to blossom here real quick. And we'll be using those 05 and 06 and 07 dollars, I believe. And it's kind of back to the old late 60s and 70s for me because the panel homes and stuff when we was doing those kind of programs. And I'm encouraged. I just want to make that comment. Okay. Ms. Jordan. And my comment is 
I know Don Greenfeather and, and I know most of the housing people and I'm not trying to attack them. But as a body, I think we have to look at all alternatives as concerns housing. And I would ask that Curtis put the housing plan on the next next uh, your next committee meeting so that we can look at it. Okay. And, and that is a proper plan. Yes. Is it Harley me? I'm sorry, Harley. If if you would consider that, I would certainly appreciate it. So we can visit the housing plan and have a complete understanding of of what's being done in housing. Because that's a big, big issue in my okay. my area. Then he will put it up, Mr. Gardner. Mr. Chair, we need to get back on the bus. I, I I agree. We do. Excuse me. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. Okay. When he's oh. up here, so you he won't have to come back. Can he break these in order of importance for me? His new initiatives. The Since he is the group leader, or the one over here talking about. I'm not the group leader. Like the Dean of Education, I guess. Okay. Except he's not. I'm not sure he's oh, the person well, to do it. Oh, Mr. Foreman's here. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. One one comment I want you to think about. Then I'm going to sit down. <laughs> And that is, this isn't the only housing, remember, this isn't the only housing mm -hmm. program. It's one we call self-help, where they put sweat equity into it. We don't have crews, you know, like housing authority used to have that go out and build a complete house. This is a self-help uh, program where the participants put sweat equity in, into the house. Uh, could we okay. ask him to stay with Ms. Foreman when she comes up? Yeah, he, he isn't leaving. Okay. Okay. Ms. Foreman. Okay. There are several new initiatives under community services. Mm -hmm. I think the question has been asked, which do you believe are the most important and rank them in order? We have the 100,000 for the community planning. <coughs> we have one million three hundred twenty-nine thousand for the community training and technical assistance. We have two hundred and four thousand for self-help community buildings. One hundred and fifty-nine thousand for CNE inspections, and one hundred thousand for the two vans for community transportation. Um, I think. Carter, the community training and technical assistance is a major one because we, uh, as was mentioned yesterday, that Compassion Capital Grant ended, and so uh, the funding and that the federal funds have been reduced uh, more than half of what we was awarded last time, and so I think to continue growing these communities and the organizations, I think it would be very beneficial that that one get funded. And, and what would be the next one? I just want to know the unit okay, excuse me. I just want to know the, what unit number is it? That's 1010531. 101? 0531. It's on page one of the new issues. Thank you. I think the, uh, the next one would be the self help community building. We have. Uh, communities requesting that uh, they would like to have a community building in their area and so we have them request all the time and so I think that would be beneficial. That would also give um, a place for the communities to meet for you know committee meetings or um, whatever else they may have within that community. So I think that would be my second. And your next one? Yes. Ms. Foreman, do you think you could use more money in that line item? Because you're only getting two grants buildings. So would it, if, if, if this one's funded, would you want it funded at a higher level? Yes. That would benefit, I think, the communities. You get more community buildings out there than just the two that we've proposed. Thank you. Of course, remember there's always the option if they come up with another do community, then we do the mod and, and add it at that time. Um. 
the other, uh, let's see, I'm looking at this and it looks like the committee organization training, self-help buildings, community planning, community transportation, and what other one did you say? I'm sorry. C the C&E inspections? Yes. And um, what that, I think that that would be good. I've talked to our director, Billy Hicks, on that, and we haven't had the funding for that to go and inspect the casinos like we should okay. when it comes to the health codes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that has been very beneficial for you know the guests that we have that come to the casinos for us to go and inspect them more often than what we had. Do we have the community planning and community transportation? The community planning, I think, um, is very beneficial. That also um, gets all departments um, involved so that we can kind of have, you know, work more closely together on the strategies that have been assigned or given and so the community planning um, I think is beneficial for the whole tribe so that we have you know one goal and we all work together and try to obtain that goal with all the other resources within the other departments. Okay. The transportation the, the community transportation is the uh, request to purchase two vans, and those would be made available for all of the various community organizations to use. Um, I think that that would be a very beneficial initiative and um, would rank that very highly. Okay. Will you make it 1A? <laughs> I think be. so. <laughs> okay. We have one A, B, C, and D. I see. There are no number twos. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Charlene. Yes, you're welcome. Mr. Thorne. Listen, I'm, I'm going to ask you, what was the uh, community training and tech assist? What's that program in cover? What do you do? What this will do is... Um, let me kind of read what was included on in the proposal that we had. Under a federal grant called Compassion Capital, which ended, uh, the Cherokee Nation has engaged in training and technical assistance with community organizations, which is over 40 organizations over the last three years. This work was done with, without an organized, well-documented curriculum or process. Um, the project works to build community organizations into stable, accountable groups with the ability to expand local activities many times over. Board, boards learn finance reporting, meeting conduct, planning, technical writing, needs assessment, community involvement, problem solving, grant administration, and many other skill areas. So it's basically to help develop, continue developing that organization. Is How many that people is. does this involve in hiring? How many people are on the payroll? In this program. Jack is the budget analyst over this program and so she handles the budgets and knows the compassion grant is ending, so um, the this training one wouldn't start until ten one, so technically he hasn't hired any additional staff. What staff is on board um, right now? It would be like a manager, a budget analyst, administrative assistant and a like a coordinator. So there's four. Now this is one million four hundred thousand or three hundred thousand. Well, he's going to be hiring million. additional staff. Four, or, well, he's going to be hiring additional staff once this project gets started. Okay. And this is this will be reoccurring every year from now on using discretionary funds. It was in a five-year plan. He has no several people in the budget, too. Okay. Mr. Baker. Now, uh, under this line item, would this 
also include the sub grants like the Compassion uh, Capital Land for these community organizations. Sub awards. Sub awards. And this is the group that organizes the communities, that organized Hellhole, that organized uh, uh, Dry Creek, and, and got them to the point that they were organized enough to propose a community building and now have have continued on and then they have sub grants for, for some of these things that in the community do things we would like to do but at a much lower cost to us than it would be if we did them directly. So anyway. They also do extra duty contracts with other departments to go out and provide training to these organizations and stuff. Okay. Ms. Jordan. This is Ricky's program. Yes. yes. And you all are going to see federal funding from other sources as we get into the year. We're going to try to tag into the spot. He's applied for it. Is that $500,000? Uh, this is this program really accomplishes a lot out in the communities. Uh, it, it's the reason that we're seeing a lot of the uh, community centers go up, isn't it? Mr. So. I just, just want to reconfirm that this is the uh, line item where uh, I believe it was yesterday we <coughs> indicated that there is a proposal out there that's not included in this budget, but it was in fact half of what was originally allocated, which was approximately 600000 or something. Okay. Ms. Okay. Mr. Buzzer. That, that's exactly what I was going to comment on. Ms. Fraser. Um, on the self-help, this is not, nothing good. That, but on the self-help housing, this may oh, be... We can't to hear them. you. I'm sorry. This may... I should perhaps address this and, Cal, and or Cali. On the self-help housing yesterday, she mentioned that there was a payback of around... What was it? 35,000? 35,000. 35, Can you tell me where that's reflected in here? That is not in the budget yet. This is a, a brand new model um, but the way this would work is it would be set up as a loan program and as those funds are collected it would go back into the pool to build more houses it would become a, a revolving fund so to speak okay. where, where is the money accounted for uh, when it comes back it would um, what we've done is we've set up a, a separate accounting unit to get ready for this program um, when these budgets were prepared, um, it was not something that we were planning for. If we start to build the houses and their, their mortgages go into place, we will bring forth the budget mod showing here's the loan amount, here's how much we think the payments will be, and these are principal only. There's zero interest, so there's not going to be any interest income. All it's really going to be is the principal coming back into the pool and when you get enough money, then you can use that money to go build another house. Okay. Mr. So. It's 30 years. Sorry. It's going to take a while to build up money. Thank you. Can you provide some details on the, uh, there's a, a line on there that talks about community garden, 20,000. Can you provide some details on that? That was um, requested carryover money. We had done um, the community garden project, I guess, at the council's request. Uh, and that's to provide a tractor and, and equipment for different communities to utilize out their parties. But I don't think that much money is going to be there. Okay, Ms. Jordan. Ms. Foreman, uh, on those $35,000 uh, packages, prior to those going out to the participants, we will have them sign mortgages and notes on their property and file those of record prior to them getting the material. Yes. Okay. That's going to be part of our policy? Yes. Okay. And we're working with committees, uh, with Commerce, on their handling all the financial part of that and getting that all taken care of. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I just want to make one, one, one clarification, Mr. Chair, on that technical assistance, $1.3 million program. That yes. She said currently has three employees. The budget is for 10. Okay. Any more? Uh, anything else on this group? Is this community service? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Say one more thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
explain it really yesterday. We showed that we budgeted 2.5 million. Kelly explained that we budget for it, which would be these are expenses that we signed the contract with that we pay them and they reimburse us. You're talking about the landfill? Uh huh. Okay, that's cool. That's, uh, okay, here might be a different group. Um, is it the proper time to ask about this there? Or do I need to? Let's finish up the meeting and then I'll go to this thing. Okay, I'll read. Senate on community services. Um, I think I got through the roads program, didn't I? Okay, yes, excuse me. Mr. Buzzer. Uh, yesterday I made a motion to put $500,000 into the water and sanitation program, but I failed to mention that I'd like to make an amendment to that, to make that the contracts only. Anything over $5,000 of those uh, dollars to be used. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded that we added 500000 to the water and sewer project yesterday. That would be contract only. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Be opposed. Okay. And that will also eliminate any indirect costs. Right. Okay. So are we through with community services? Okay, and I believe health, health. Yeah. Melissa is here from health. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we appreciate, and we are through with community services. We appreciate y'all being here and answering our questions. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. The, um, the health services is budgeting just a slight increase over the prior year, actually. I've taken in their budget, I've taken the uh, health clinic capital expenditures out so it doesn't distort the charts. You'll see a uh, significant increase over 06. The direct care for the Muskogee Clinic is in here, just not the capital expenditure related to construction, as well as the Community Anti-Drug Network grant, which was new in 07 in the yellow bar, which is uh, almost $4 million. Those two things are driving up the budgets after fiscal year 06. As far as the funding, you can see that predominantly it's, it's all federal, Indian Health Service. Primarily, you can see the impact of those, those items I just mentioned. What's causing the increase? From a salary perspective, you can see a significant amount of salary increase, also related to the large expansion operations in Muskogee, and over a hundred employees related to that. You can see on the staff. The executive director, the group leader, uh, you can see the capital project fund showing the big decrease in 08 versus 07. Since most of the expenditures were in fiscal year 07 on the construction, it's a slight decrease compared to 06. There's multiple things affecting this particular department, uh, not just the $30 million of bonds for construction, also, one-time funding for the equipment for the clinic of another $5 million. The cancer diabetes treatment and prevention budget is $6 million. It's not in the budget. It totals $41 million decrease, but it's slightly offset with the electronic dental records of almost 900000 initiative in the gen fund. And there are six new positions being budgeted in the group leaders department. The clinical support service department showing a $5 million decrease of 25% due to the omission of the motor field tax funded contract health subsidy of $2.5 million, the contract health cancer treatment of $2 million, and the contract health dentures and eyeglasses for $1.2 million. And those are all general uh, tribal discretionary funds that are not in the OA relatively flat compared to the 06 actuals. 
the administrative support department in health was increasing the budgeting a 10% increase of 218,000. Increase in operational line items to support the new Muskogee Clinic workload. The increase also represented additional staff positions. The 32% increase over 06 actuals, or almost 600,000, also due to the additional staff, with the MIS increasing, or their, their, tech, their computer department in health, so computer support, is increasing 291,000, or 52%, and billings are increasing, the department are increasing by 213,000. And again, a lot of this is directly related to the expansion of operations of the health over in the scope. The direct care clinics themselves, this is this is Muskogee on page 92 is where I'm in. This is this is the clinic expansion. You can see the large number of staffing increase there. And last, the community health preventive service, a slight five percent increase budget to budget compared to 06 actuals is a 25 percent or six million dollar increase. A lot of that's related to the additional staffing. Uh, 3.7 of it of that six million is due to the DHHS grants. Specifically, the Community Anti-Drug Network Grant, which was new in 07, so it didn't exist in 06, and it constitutes 3.6 million of the increase. Skipping over a couple of pages to the page 94. You can see the dental record initiative there at the top. The health record project and the database consolidation project are not being requested to be repeated. Are those projects completed? Are we, the, uh, They're not completed, but... We just haven't asked for the carryover for the project yet. Health record and database consolidation. Okay. We, you should expect to see requests for carryover coming in early mods for these two, the health record and the consolidation project. The medical coding and document, document imaging is requesting uh, about a third of its level of funding from this year, probably the point of carryover. Uh, skipping on down through, you don't see a whole lot of changes. Uh, you see the Muskogee equipment, one-time funding, significant item there in the uh, IHS funds. Going to the next page, page 95, just obviously see the Muskogee Clinic. And then the clinical support services is where the uh, tribal, the Gen Fund initiatives are being, uh, not being repeated here for cancer, denture eyeglass, and contract health subsidy. The return to work is being requested to be refunded. Um, moving on down. Um, the NARCH, uh, NARCH, is it ended or are we going to re- It's ended, but I think we're going to get it in. Okay, so we may see that one coming back into the budget down at the bottom of page 95, the 225,000. Uh, going to the next page, Mr. Thorne. Melissa, are we, are we not funding this cancer? Indentures, my best. We're going to cut our dentures and eye glasses program completely out. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Putting it in it somewhere else? Or? The, uh, first, let me give a disclaimer that I'm really sick. <laughs> so if I'm not thinking well, I apologize. But um, um, when we request through administration our budget for the year, and I've said this a million times, I think, even in commit different committees, whether executive finance or health, but we were, what I prefer is that we have CHS pot of money and that we're able, able to have the flexibility to do with that to meet the highest medical priorities. So I never request um, and don't prefer to have various set-asides for different activities because it's harder it's harder for us to administer that and to spend it appropriately. And I think you'll notice that on some of the pots that there's some money like for uh, for the uh, 
Merck dentures and eyeglasses, I think we're expecting to have about $200,000 carryover in that. So it's easier if we just have a CHS pot of money and be able to set the priorities in that pot. So I did not request set aside no. Mr. Baker. Here. Oh, scout here. You run out of funding? Pardon me? If you run out of funding? In the CHS, if we run out of funding, then we'll ask for a supplement. Okay. But I don't do that at the beginning of the year. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Baker? Yeah. Oh, Melissa. I, I know you're <laughs> I know you're not well today. So I'll be gentle. <laughs> but in that pot of money, we know that it's only twenty five percent of the of the need. In the CHS that we get from yeah. IHS. I mean it's about twenty eight percent. That's okay, twenty eight percent of the money. So you know that it's not gonna last a year. Right? I assume that, yes. And would it be fair to say that heart problems, uh, loss of life, loss of limb are all going to rate above dentures in, in your doctors and your... Their medical priority. Yes. Their med medical priority. It has to be these other things. Unless but there it, happens to be one of those that are for a medical priority. Right. Right. But eyeglasses is not life-threatening. That's correct. And dentures is not, 90% of the time is not. And sometimes life eyeglasses can be. It depends well, on what the circumstances. Okay. But I'm just saying, you know, we get out in the communities and we talk to these elders and, and now we're not talking medical, we're talking quality of life. And what's going to make this 89-year-old elder <coughs> happier and healthier for the next five years or two years or, or some period of time? You know you don't have enough money. You're going to, and, and you should, and your doctor should take care of the life-threatening stuff first because we know we don't have enough money to do everything. But at the same time, this council in the past, and I pray in the future, will put pots of money aside for dentures and eyeglasses that, that they uh, identify and for the... See, another problem I have is in the cancer treatment in your rating system, and, and, and it's the way I, IHS in every place, is if you're going to die, you, you get the top priority. And, but we know that if we catch some of the cancers early, that it's cheaper and takes care, you know, and, and it doesn't, doesn't get to that point. And so maybe uh, a minor cancer doesn't doesn't rate up there for the uh, uh, for the doctors when, when they go through their deal that you know these are, are much worse. We need to treat them first. So I have found that you know putting money back for cancer treatment uh, now you know the contract helpline that we usually put in this early in the year maybe we don't need to put that right now. But you know you're going to need it before the year's out. All I'm saying is that if you supplement CHS, then it lets us get further down on the list of priority. If you set aside in specific line items, that money has to be used for that, and we still have all of these medical unmet needs. It's all about priority. If you think giving someone a pair of dentures is a priority over saving their life, I disagree with that. And that's why I don't think, it, that's why you and I agree that you're not going to take seat, uh, your, your pot of money to you do dentures. That's correct. But... Unless it's a medical priority. Unless it's a medical priority. That's correct. But you just happen to be the department that if, if we want to do dentures and eyeglasses, we need a... But if you supplement the CHS budget as You'll never whole, do dentures. Well, I'm not going to say that. Well, you're not, you won't ever do the eyeglasses. I'm not going to say that either. Well, you won't. Okay. Uh, I'm good. I mean, if I have $30 million in contract help, I'll do everything. <laughs> I move we uh, put $30 million, uh, No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're on the same sheet. <laughs> I'm, I'm done for me. Okay. I might 
a note of the two million for the 2007 budget and the cancer treatment. 669,000 has been expended, and there's still a balance of a million three hundred thirty thousand in that. And the eyeglasses and dentures of the million one ninety five. There's 663,000 has been expended. There's 531,900 still in there. Can I address that? Yes. <clears throat> I ran a report. I had my CPA to run a report as of September the 11th. And this goes back to my initial conversation. In cancer, there's 2 million obligated. We spent 1.1 million. This is September the 11th when she ran this. What happens, and, and I can go through and tell you the balances on the rest of them, which are a lot more updated than what you have. But well, actually, excuse me, right. Melissa, what I was actually right. stating this is the fact that this will be carried over. Right, right. Well, the, pro the problem is, is that in CHS, and, and you all know this, I don't even have to say it, but it's such a difficult program to manage, not only operational-wise, but even budget-wise. And when I have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I have 12 different, what we call cans, they're accounting codes or whatever, pots of money, what I'll say. When you process three to 4,000 referrals a month, sometimes those get charged to the wrong account code. And so what we do in the last quarter of the year, and this is where, what we're doing now, is we're ensuring, going back and making sure that all of those um, are charged to the correct account code. It is our anticipation in doing that that we're going to actually um, have our cancer obligations are going to be real close. So we're not going to have probably a whole lot of carryover there. Our moat dentures and eyeglasses, we are going to have some carryover. Because it doesn't matter if, if I have $5 million in that, I only have so much capacity in dental and so much capacity in optometry that sometimes I, we just can't process that much or there's not a need for it. That's why I like to have the flexibility to use it wherever it's needed. The 2.5 million supplemental um, was given in um, April, I believe it was, and so we're ensuring that um, we make all efforts and I think you saw in this month's report, sorry I wasn't here Tuesday, but um, you know, 92% of our referrals for the month of August were approved. Um, that was only 8% that was denied. So we're having to go back and, and, and make sure that all of our accounting cans, which are 12 different ones, are in alignment. Our CHS, our PMS system that we use, is a very complicated, and I'm sure Kelly can vouch and maybe Doug can do um, to be able to make sure that those are um, credited to the correct can or accounting code. Mr. So. Yes, I've got a question. As far as uh, what time do the council member to uh, make that process a little bit more flexible for you? Because I, I, I realize that, that you know sometimes we're trying to, to, to obviously help, but if we're not allocating the right amount of money, then you know, this 500000 that was, uh, or let's just use that for a discussion, is, is a carryover, then you obviously could have, in, in your wisdom and your, you know, hands-on at point at the point of uh, contact with people, could have either, you know, delegated or, or used that in other departments that ran out of money that you had no alternative funds for. So what can we as council members do to improve that process? I think the process, to me, could be improved by if there was a supplemental, that it just be a blank supplemental. Because Indian Health, the money I get from Indian Health Service for contract health is, is based on residents, and we serve all American Indians and Alaska Natives in our jurisdictional area for contract health. If it's tribal dollars, we only serve Cherokee citizens. So if it's a pod that's a supplement with tribal dollars, those are only for <coughs> Cherokee citizens. So we're not going to be serving all of the other American Indians and Alaska Natives that live in our jurisdictional area out of that money. It's only going to be Cherokee citizens. 
So I think that because of that, you're going to be able to do a lot, serve a lot more needs in that pot of money out of tribal dollars. Is that, Does that help, uh, Mr. Stone? Is, would it be possible that you could provide just a, a, a plan, or maybe an existing plan, or, or, or maybe a priority list that, that people like to see? Sure, absolutely. As far as, and, and maybe that we're back in the same boat, and that the, that the eyeglasses are, in fact, the last thing that, that get to the uh, the list. But and I can do one for the tribal supplement. I mean, that just, sure. just hearing that would give me more confidence to say, well, they know what they're they're doing. They're obviously. Because you know, they are two different so. priority lists, so to speak. Right. You have one for regular CHS dollars and one for tribal dollars. Right, I'll be glad to. Okay. Dr. Kyle. <clears throat> I don't think I could have asked the question any more eloquently than Counselor So, but I don't have anything else. Ms. Jordan. What was the total, Melissa, that you put in futures, eyeglasses, and cancer last year? Okay, in uh, <coughs> medical emergency uh, equipment resource program, which is our equipment program, and eyeglasses and dentures, the total was 1.195 million. And and for cancer, it was two million. Back to work was 1.3 million, and the supplement was 2.5 million. And what you're proposing that it would be better for you in negotiating, I guess, with IHS, if that was a blank supplemental. Right. If I didn't have like, because if I instead of having like a certain pot for equipment, a certain pot for eyeglasses, a certain pot for dentures, a certain pot for um, equipment and cancer, you know, and back to work, which by the way has been one of our most successful programs. Instead of having those individual accounting codes, it, if it was just a supplement, like okay. a tribal supplement. And within that supplemental, that what we're calling a blank supplemental, we could prioritize within the policy <coughs> uh, how we wanted dentures, eyeglasses, cancer, and emergency equipment, and back to work address. And that would assist you when you do your negotiations or or what? Well, it, it would help in that, and it helps administer that money. And then it puts and it, it makes a better for, utilization of that money. And then it puts it aside also for the uh, the the citizens' needs. Yes. And that would so you know if we if we had that and and I had a Cherokee citizen that actually needed a di diagnostic test, so to speak. Then I could use that tribal dollars for that. And I wouldn't. If we rolled all four of those sure. units into one, what's the amount we're talking about if we funded it at the previous year's level? Okay, you got me those figures. I don't have a. That's right. Seven million. I think it's usually. It's five million. Five point. What do you have this? Five point six nine five. And, and Jack, I need your guidance on this a motion to do that. Uh, I would like to see the money set aside for the four critical uses or five critical uses that we've talked about through policy developed within there to get those eyeglasses, dentures, emergency equipment, back to work, and cancer needs met. But I don't want to stymie Melissa when she goes to IHS for money and does her negotiations. Okay. Are you going to ask for carryover on these funds, I assume? If there is for, carryover, yes. Okay. <coughs> And I would think I that if she still. can bring us a figure at that time, once we know the amount of the carryover, then we would have a better idea of how much to put into it. But we know we're going to need some because we know we've used up a whole lot last year. 
So even if we have a million carryover, do we need to put four million in that supplemental line to give her money to hit the ground running? Okay, because as I understand carryover, it could go back in the pot. It's not well, what exactly it's for, a carryover. If we approve it in the in the mod one, then it would go back into the purposes that it was originally designated. But if Doug has a comment first, excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we need to understand that although the system right now appears as though there's a significant amount of carryover uh, on the books right now as far as actual expenditures, there's obligations out there that will be encumbering those dollars. And when the treatment, if, it, if the treatment, like for instance, can, um, if their treatment occurs after 930, it's going to be an expenditure in a way. Okay? Now, when they obligate in our people, mm -hmm. yeah, because they'll, they'll approve a treatment plan that'll take that patient out X amount of treatments and they'll cost X amount of estimated dollars, and they'll obligate that. Now, they've obligated a whole lot more than what's actually been expended at this point, and it's going to be into November before we actually know what treatment did not occur by 930, and that'll give us a real clear picture of what the real carryover and what any additional funding may occur. So, but they need money now. I mean, they need money in this budget to start with until they figure out what that possible carryover could have been. Yeah. Kelly, do you have a comment on this? I just wanted to mention that we do have in the budget the $1.5 million under the return to work category, which would get them started into the 08 fiscal year. On the um, return to work. On the return to work. But not the dentures or eyeglasses or cancer. And well, you were talking earlier about um, probably in the health committee going through and looking at what the policy should be and what Melissa was saying, you know, having one big pot of money versus separate designations. So I guess what I would be proposing is we don't know what our carryover is going to be. We don't know. Uh, we won't know a good number for that until November. Um, they've got 1.5 million in the budget right now as a supplement that gets them started. If we could maybe, Excuse me. Um, Melissa, um, that's what I was asking Doug. I think uh, in, on the 1.5 that's in the budget already, it's designated as return to work. But if we could undesignate that and just make that the supplement to start the year, and then I'll set the. Okay. Did you understand? I understand. So in other words, it could be opened up for those other activities. I'm, okay. I make that yeah. Motion. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, pardon. Wait. What? I didn't. Who made it? Made it deal. But I didn't. Okay. <laughs> what's, what's the motion? Yes, well, I didn't hear the motion either. To remove the restriction on the 1.5 and make it oh, the no. overall no. supplement. Is that... To include all those activities. To include all of those activities. And she's going to provide us with the plan. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> she's going to provide us with the plan. That's Chris requested. Okay, so the motions were made and seconded. That we move the 1.5 to the general contract. And I'll bill. include those all those activities. So, so now we're open for discussion. I have Mr. Baker, and then I have. Oh, yeah. I truly think we're walking backwards here. I mean, Melissa just told you that the back to work is one of the best programs that we've ever come up with. It's the only program that if you have a constituent that needs knee surgery that they could get it so they could go back and make a living and and support their families because nothing in IHS or in our policies or anything ever allowed for a rotocuff or a knee surgery or anything like that because it never prioritizes up high enough. And we have put literally hundreds of people back to work with that designated program. Is that not true? Absolutely. And and to, to take that designated all so that we can divide the money up to dentures and eyeglasses and, and prosthetics and these other things that we have over years identified that we need to be doing as a tribe, I just I really think we're walking backwards. And I mean, let's put a million dollars in to uh, 
th- those pots of, of dentures, eyeglasses, prosthetics, those things. But let's leave back to work alone, please. Um, I, I, I mean, I agree with you. There are a lot of people we put back to work. It's a great program. All I'm saying is because we were on a conversation about carryover, and we won't, know, I won't know that number until November or December. And and Councillor uh, Jordan was asking about how do we get started now for October the first. Um, I think that would be an option to get started for October 1st until we get the carryover numbers and then we'll have a good plan of how much we need for the rest of the year for that pot of money. So we would not be doing away with return to work. I'll continue to do that. But I asked for $1.5 million for return to work for 12 month period. All I'm saying is the 1.5 can be from now until the end of the carryover period, and then we have a plan of what we need for the remainder of the year. Well, why don't we, as an amendment to that or something, let's leave the 1.5 and let's bring forth the contract help that we got to 2.1 million uh, unexpended in, and just bring that forth into this budget to start the year out and take a look at. We've got it in the contract health budget from tribal funds, but let's leave the 1.5 alone, please, and just ask that the carryover come forward from contract health line to get it started till you come up with this plan of how we're going to do dentures, eyeglasses, prosthetics, and those other things that are never going to prioritize with your docs in that system of of, of contract dollars. So do you want to request a printing amendment? I would. I, I, I would beg that we leave the 1.5 alone and just bring forward the 2.1. I thought Zeal made the motion. Okay. This is all right. She'll make that. Well, I'm, I'm, I just moved the table to the motion. I second it. Until we know a little bit more, I mean, I hate to see okay. it uncovered. Okay. The motion's been made to table and, and seconded. So all in favor of tabling? Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. No. Okay. Those in favor of tabling, raise your hands, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven to table. Those opposed? Seven. And all opposed. So there'll be eight against table. So now we need to. Is Meredith. Is Meredith. I have to And would Miss Steele like to propose my friend name in? Yeah. Okay. I can't without her. We're, we're waiting on the printing amendment, but Janelle had a question. Do you want <laughs> Janelle, do you want to ask the question yes. or do you want to wait until we see what happens with the printing amendment? Okay. I have a question for Melissa. I've been waiting very patiently for this. This depends on how I would like to know from you. What is the best way that we can help you? I know that we're going to get eyeglasses and seizures because I trust you that much. But what is the very best way, what's your idea for us to help you? What is the best? That's what I want to know. What do you want? I think what the best is, is to have the utmost flexibility for all of those things that you're talking about. Return to work, dentures, eyeglasses, equipment, whatever that is. And to have one supplement, that's tribal dollars, okay. that I use that to prioritize those things out of. Can you put a money amount on that for us? How much? That's what we, we need some directions. Well, we want to help you. It's hard to put a money amount until we know what the carryover is going to be. But um, that's why I just suggested what's in there, just use that and open it up, and let's start with that. 
and then in November or December, I have to look to Kelly or Doug, I don't know when we get those, but when we get those final carryover numbers, then we can come back and tell and, and say what that is. So that would be an option. Um, okay, does that, okay, Ms. Fraley? Yes, sir. Uh, Council Baker is asking for a friendly amendment. Very great. <laughs> okay. We've got the one point. Okay. You know, one of our greatest leaders here at the tribe is Melissa. She brought her health care system phenomenal distance in the last six years. And so I think there's great wisdom in deferring to things that you're asking her. And one of the good examples with the dentures and eyeglasses we discovered, you know, years ago was a great idea to put a bunch of money up front in eyeglasses. But what that meant is that even though there's money for, for dentures, we use a denture example, you have to have dentists to evaluate the patients before you get dentures. And so since that was became a priority, then the dentists were taken off working for the kids. And so the kids went without the preventive stuff, and so the children suffered while we were... Um, shifting resources to deal with dentures. So a lot of these systems, we all are very empathetic about trying to get to it, but who's in the best position to understand how the entire system works for our ability to actually execute things like dentures and eyeglasses and orthopedic surgeries and such really lies with uh, Melissa and, and giving her the opportunity to come back with a priority list makes a lot of sense. Because every time, uh, uh, I've never said this publicly, but Melissa knows how to pinch a penny in two. <laughs> and uh, we've been able to very successfully negotiate with Hillcrest and other places to get procedures down, to get them to do things that leverages our money tremendously in contract health care. And so being able to understand our current capacity, our negotiating ability with the vendors, how we can marry our resources for our people with the resources of the health service. Uh, there are things that Melissa and her people are very good at doing and have had a great history and demonstrated success in that. So as much flexibility that she can give her as she's requested will actually get us the maximum use of our tribal funds, the best number of services and best quality of services for our folks. <coughs> Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Friendly amendment. We'll leave the 1.5 for back to work, just like it's proposed in the budget. Carry forward. Leave. Let the cancer treatment go away. Let the dentures eyeglasses go away. But we've got a line item of contract health for tribal dollars that right now has 2.1 million on it. It probably won't be quite that by the time it gets to the carryover. But bring forth that contract health line item carryover for Melissa to work this program for dentures, eyeglasses, cancer, prosthetics, all those other things that we've line item individually before. But back to work, as by her own admission, is one of the best programs that we've ever had. So if we leave that alone and carry forward the 2.1 or whatever that carryover is in that line item, then I think everybody can... Uh, be comfortable that she's going to be able to start the year and come forth with that program for us. Would you accept that? Yes. I think that's an appropriate arbitrage order, but uh, how can we technically properly carry over something we don't know what the carryover is? I'm concerned that, about that the was, direction we're headed and what, why we're not. I agree. That was going to be my comment that we don't know the amount of carryover until. But it'll be in, whatever it is, it'll be enough to, to start that program. Excuse me. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question of Melissa? Yes. Based on what he based on what he is recommending, how will that help you uh, to since you don't know what the carryover is? Which is the better way to help you get done what you need to get done and serve as many people as we need to serve? Based on well, uh, before I answer that, if I could, I does want to say something about carryover. I don't understand carryover very well. I know what carryover is, but 
when you get into like the Lawson system, I don't do Lawson. <laughs> so I don't know how that works. Is that all right, Mr. Chairman? For another meeting in there, whatever. <coughs> and then yes. I'll answer. Okay. Okay. If she can't answer, if she gets that answer. Two, two things I want to point out. The flexibility being provided to Melissa and the health group, as well as the technical aspect of this budget. When you roll the anticipated carryover of these three items into one generic contract help and estimate that carryover, be it a million, adjust it later, but put something in there because technically she has no legal spending authority to pay any treatments after 930. So if we don't put a carryover estimate in there, I'm curious how she's going to pay any treatments for any of her commitments for cancer or dentures, whether the dentures are in their you know, receding time or they're in a stage, you know, stage one or two or whatever of their cancer treatment. I'm just curious how she's going to pay those bills if you don't. So I guess what okay. I'm saying is, is by rolling those three, it gives her flexibility by putting them in the generic and it provides her a legal spending authority for those obligations after 930. Even though we don't know the amount. Just estimate. We estimate carryover. I thought the obviously. motion estimated it already. Okay. Four it and did. Half, right? Is what you said? Well, you, you said no. You said 2.1 million. It, it's what, what's in there today, but I think maybe Melissa estimated it 1.5. I have a direct question. I'll start yes. With more, right? I have a direct question to her. So, if I understand what Doug is saying, which may not be the case. <laughs> is that in the budget right now that's before you, there is a $1.5 million budget proposed for return to work. Yes. <clears throat> What's not in the budget right now, is, this true? Yep, yeah. <laughs> is the estimated carryover from all of those various cans of tribal dollars for CHS. So I think what Doug's saying is if we do a CHS supplement with estimation of what those carryovers are for October the 1st, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, and I think that's what Mr. Baker's saying. Yes. I still would prefer that this pot and this pot be put together to start October the 1st for maximum flexibility. And then you will bring back the yes. return to work. Yes, I'll have, I mean, I have to have one by October the 1st, and I'll bring it back to then, then Mr. Baker, I respectfully decline to accept. Okay. Okay. So the motion is still on the floor that we move the $1.5 million from return to work to contract health. And I'll entertain discussion on that. And, if, and I have a half a dozen people down now. If this pertains to discussion on this motion, then Mr. So. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, originally we said we want four programs coming out of contract health services, and then now we say we want to designate each individual department. And so, um, you know, we're, we're initially it was easy to say we trust you with three departments' decisions, but we don't trust you with uh, right to work because somehow we think that, that you might short changes or, or something might happen there to, to, to you know, kind of uh, undermine this allocation of 1.5 million but I, you know I just want to say that originally if, if you do three or four it's the same thing okay Miss Jordan I have you Melissa okay we're going to unencumber this pot that's the motion on the floor <coughs> what assurances can you give us that eyeglasses, teeth, cancer, prosthetics, and uh, uh, back to work are, are going to be accomplished. My word, I guess. I mean, <laughs> and I too gave you the word. I mean, you know, she's not She's not direct kin, folks, but she is my married. <laughs> so I do You're value... In Cherokee County, that's pretty direct. <laughs> <laughs> so I do value her work. But I want to be sure that our elderly have teeth to eat, glasses to see. I would like them to have the hearing aids, which maybe goes under the other thing, so we they can hear. 
it all goes to quality of life, which is not quality of life I see is different from I'm saving your life. And I know quality of life is going to come behind saving your life. And it'll also probably come behind making you more productive with your life, which would be the back of work. I just want some assurance that my elderly people are going to be taken care of. And if we just throw it all out on the table and we say there's five ways, I guess what I'm saying is when will we see the policies? Do you want them? Well, this afternoon would be nice. <laughs> Since I really need to go home, it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to see sufficient I've funds in there to accomplish all of your endeavors. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, I, that's why I'm, I, you know, I'm leaning towards saying no. Let's don't uncumber. I want you to tell me, convince me to say yes. Well, I mean, I I don't know what else to do but tell you. And I can tell you that if I have a tribal money set aside for a supplement, a CHS, just contract health, whatever, that what I'm what I'm going to have, all of those things will be eligible out of that pot of money. I will tell you that, yes. Because and it, the only reason is because it's it's most difficult just to have. You know, because what if I have two hundred thousand indentures, but I need three hundred thousand? What if I have one hundred and fifty in eyeglasses and I need two hundred or a hundred? You know, it's just what what we can do is if we have this one pot of money and say these are the things that we're going to use out of that. I mean, that's what I plan on doing. Yes. And is the pot if I still have four? Okay. Is the pot of 1.5 million anywhere close to sufficient for the year? For well, the 12 months, no. I would say no. Okay. So what I was gonna, I'm probably getting out of my territory. No, here. I don't no, know what come I was on say. Say. You mind. Well, what I was gonna say is that based on Doug and Callie's recommendation. For the 1.5 to be not designated as that one program, and in addition, and I guess this would be an amendment or whatever. <laughs> now I'm recommending amendments. <laughs> <laughs> to do the carryover amendment to it that Doug was talking about, and that Mr. Baker, I guess, was talking right, about. right. Just so make that's all. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll give us policies in the yes. in the committee meetings. And then so after the after the audit's done, we know what those carryover numbers are. We can adjust that and and do a reconciliation at that time. And just one more comment, because folks, it looks like we're letting our people down. It looks like when we pass this budget with no dentures, <coughs> no eyeglasses specified, no cancer care specified, uh, no uh, limb building specified, it looks like we're letting our constituents down. I do have to agree with Mr. Baker. It looks like we're going backwards. So if she'll bring the policies forward and if we can put more money in the pot, you're you're uh, you're uh, convincing me here. Okay. I mean I'll go write a policy now if you want No, no, I don't want to, I know you're sick. <laughs> But I'm usually not. I'm hardly ever sick. And Melissa knows I'm real direct, and Melissa's real direct. And we're all out of the same. same we, we, but, but we didn't even get a dad because we do have four other people. So how much? How much do you need? What's the estimate? What's the estimate? Five? We've, we've talked about two different numbers, 1.5 or 2.1. Um, the reports that Bill John was looking at said 2.1. Right. I know things will get obligated these last two or three weeks, so 1.5 should be reasonable. So 1.5 plus 1.5 or right. 3 million. Undesignate the return to work and bring forward 1.5 of carryover. So it should have 3 million total to start the year. Would, can I make a friendly amendment? Uh, I would ask you to consider a friendly amendment that we put 
Three, whatever you want. 1.5. Well, 1.5. Yeah, 3 million in the fund with the policies being written that it will go to those five items that we are combining. Yeah, that would be With the policy being written that it will be those uh, used for those five items. Excuse me. Point of clarification. Yeah, I thought the motion was already it already addressed all this. Yeah, it was to encumber uh, this return to work 1.5. But she, we're talking about the now. Yes. Talking about 1.5. Uh, anticipated carryover, which would be 3.0. We give her three, which would give her more flexibility. But what I'm concerned about is, are we restricting it to five, like she's recommending? Is that too restrictive? Okay. <clears throat> the reason I would say yes is because what, and it's in, 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 Please don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to get away from those fives. I'm going to do those five. Okay. All I'm saying is if I had a Cherokee citizen that needed a diagnostic test that didn't meet medical priority under the IHS CHS, it would be nice to have that flexibility to be able to pay for that and get that service. So including those five, plus, the plus if there's a other medical priority, for a Cherokee citizen, plus if there was a medical priority for a Cherokee citizen, then that even has the utmost. Okay, I'll accept. What, so now we've got like six things, I guess. Well, five, well, five, five, yeah, five, five plus medical priority. Yeah. Everybody's going okay. like this. I'll second so, so you accept that? <laughs> you'll, do you admit? Do you agree to accept this? Amendment? Yes. Okay. So now our amendment is the 1.5 return to work moved to general contract health plus an additional 1.5 carryover so that there's $3 million in the general fund for contract health. With those priorities. Six priorities. With, with the priorities. Okay. Now, I still have four people down. If you want to discuss this, Dr. Cobb? But I to relate to the motion, please. At the risk of pushing the limits here, I think that unless you're day to day, every single day in the healthcare business, I would put forth that it is a distinct possibility that someone could underestimate the complexity of healthcare. And it has been suggested, um, and with all due respect, I disagree that we are leaving, we possibly are leaving our elders behind. And with all due respect, what I would suggest is that we are pushing the limits of the tribal council micromanaging a group. Your group leader has already told you what would be the most flexible, what would allow health care to do what they need to do. When a group leader publicly states what would allow them to be the most flexible, and on top of that, what I think we may be forgetting here is we get monthly reports. It's not like we have to request this. We get monthly reports on this. Um, when a group leader tells you what would allow that group to be the most flexible, I fail to see what the problem is unless we are really pushing the limits of micromanaging a group. Thanks. Mr. Gardner. <clears throat> We've heard from our expert uh, group leader. She's made a recommendation, and I call for question. Okay, well, I have three other people that have. I wave. I, I do too. 
okay. Okay. And the question's been called. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Do we have other items under health services? As you go through the rest of these uh, detailed pages, you won't notice anything significant. You've, you've just addressed the significant items of the health division. The rest of it's the operational increases in the Muscogee Clinic. Um, the, uh, As you go through the rest of the detailed pages, I mean, I, I don't have anything else to add that I haven't already commented on. Okay. Okay, excuse me. Ms. Fishing Hawk, you have to. Can she part with her before she leaves? I know she wants to go home. I don't feel good. Melissa, we have. We have two new initiatives. Three. Three. <coughs> that uh, they would like for prioritization, which you feel is um, most. Well, that's a little bit difficult because this is a prioritized list. My list had about 50 things on it, <laughs> and I prioritized it down to four. <laughs> So um, I can explain each one of them a little bit. Yeah, that will. Um, the new initiatives, there are four. One is community recreation centers. Um, as you know, we purchased Marcoma property, and our goal mm -hmm. in uh, preventing and community health is um, to increase physical activity and to assist people in their um, diet and exercise programs, which are all preventive measures. To no, unless am I looking for <laughs> <laughs> part of <laughs> part the ones? Unless the ones we have, right far right side, it gives all groups. Far right side, it tells what group. Okay. Worksite well. It's a really good program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What happened in this? It's there. Oh, it's a continuation. Oh, okay. It's not a new one. It's not new. Okay. We got a new one. Okay. Well, I don't mind new initiative. Whatever. I'm sorry. Just these three. Plus. This. Those aren't new. Yeah. Okay. What's the first one you have? Work side well. Okay, work side well. I'm sorry. Community recreation is a one that was funded in 07, so I apologize for that. It's not a new initiative. Work side wellness. Um, um, what we want to do there is we want to institute a work site wellness program inside of Cherokee Nation for employees. We're going to pilot it there. Um, once it's piloted and if it works, then we hope to be able to take it out to other places, work sites and community, uh, community organizations. Um, all we're asking for in OA is for, we have a group that's working on this. And we asked for $50,000 uh, to do a comprehensive employee wellness needs assessment so that we can, and we're working with the uh, Oklahoma State Department of Health to do this, so that we can uh, assess what the employee health needs are uh, to be able to design the worksite wellness program. Um, Electronic, and then we'll use that to develop a plan, which would be for the next fiscal year to come back and fund the plan. For electronic dental record, um, we are going to electronic health record, which has previously been funded in all of our facilities. The electronic dental record is a different um, system, and so we want our dental clinics to also be on electronic health record. And this is the uh, beginning of our uh, uh, initiative to get that done. Um, improved health information and reporting. Um, as I kind of talked a little bit in uh, uh, 
<clears throat> when I was talking about CHS reports, aren't the system that we use is it's a great patient management system, but it's a it's not a very good management and administrative system. And so we have uh, been able to find a way to put a, uh, and I'm not very IT oriented, so to put a uh, something on there that will help us to produce some really good management reports so that we can make um, better decisions on, um, you know, workload information at clinic level, hospital level, and then for the total healthcare system. And currently we don't have the capability of doing that. Um, and that's $150,000 to do that, and it's a one-time uh, investment. Okay. Does that help? Yes. Thanks, Melissa. Is there anything else under health services? Okay. Then we'll take a 10-minute break. <laughs> yes, you are. We appreciate it, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. Yeah.